Bob Sellers here, your resident singing fisherman. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to this, another episode right here on Hook, Line, and Singer. Today, I'm going to be showing you what is my favorite leader to mainline connection. It is the FG Knot. Now, there are a lot of different uh, tutorials and videos out there on YouTube. Most of them advocate for keeping tension on the main line and doing some different things. I never really figured it out that way. Uh, but then uh, I ran across this easier way to do it that I've been doing now for a couple years. This is one of the strongest connections available and it's a 100% connection. If your line breaks, it'll break somewhere else. That's what you always want. You don't want it to break in your knot. It's a little bit complex, but once you get the hang of it, I think this will be one of your favorite uh, connections. It's not my favorite for when I'm out on the water. My favorite for when I'm out on the water is the double uni knot. It's just quicker, it's more consistent. But when I'm at home, uh, sitting around thinking about getting ready for the next fishing trip, I need to retie some leaders and that sort of thing, and I've got plenty of time and can concentrate and, um, and that sort of thing, uh, I like to use the FG knot because it is smaller in diameter. Than the double uni knot. That's my favorite feature of this knot other than its strength. This works best when your main line is braid and your leader line is either mono, fluorocarbon, or copolymer. In this case I'm using a copolymer line. Braid is smaller actually than the copolymer and it's going to dig into that line and that's what is going to give this knot its great strength. Hey, stay tuned and let's see how to make this great knot to tie a solid connection for your main line to your leader line. Today I am featuring one of, if not my all-time favorite combo, no pun intended. Uh, this is a favorite, that's the name brand, favorite rod. Uh, it's the White Bird series. This is by far not their most expensive line of rods, but um, this is this is just one of my favorite rods. I absolutely love it. You know, it says it's a seven foot four fast action medium heavy mh the rod feels more like a medium or at least the tip does but yet it's got a strong backbone and uh this is my spinnerbait combo and uh, on this rod i've got well, what's probably my favorite reel this is a fluger patriarch xt this was fluger's top of the line reel i believe this is a 6.3 to 1 uh gear ratio um, 6.4 to 1, excuse me, gear ratio reel, feather light, uh, it casts so easy, uh, retrieves so smooth, has such a great drag system on it, the smoothest, lightest, uh, most comfortable uh, in my palm uh, reel that I own. Nothing's wrong with my leader connection here, it's just gotten a little, a little short. Uh, over the past few times I've been fishing and retying and that sort. So I'm just going to retie my leader on. This is a copolymer line. It stretches like mono. The only real difference is that it, it kinks less. I pull off uh, about seven foot uh, leader. You can see here that I I have a uni uh, to uni or a double uni connection on here now. That's what I do when I'm in the field, well, on the water. Just because it's a lot quicker and uh, it's even more consistent. This FG knot is a great knot, but uh, you really have to hone into what you're doing to make sure that that knot's perfect. You just, uh, or I don't at least, want to take the time uh, to have to do that out on the water. So uh, out there, I use the double uni connection, which is a um, great connector knot as well, but uh, it is, it's not quite as small as the FG in diameter, at least. Uh, so that's why I actually prefer the FG knot over the, U, the double uni, if I have time to tie it uh, properly, which is what we're going to do today. I use this knot when I'm when I'm home and I'm getting ready for the next trip, uh, that sort of thing, and I'm in no hurry. And you want to always look at your braid above this knot. Um, everything looks good here, so I'm just going to cut that uh, pretty close to 
my leader connection there. Let me cut it with a good sharp pair of scissors and leave you a nice uh, smooth end there. So I have my leader material here, that 15 pound uh, copolymer line. I'm right handed, so I'm going to put that, uh, I'm going to place that in my left hand. I'll give myself two or three inches of tag in uh, here and pinch that between my thumb and index finger, just like that. Now I'm going to take my main line, my braid. This is 30 pound Power Pro braid, and I'm going to pull. Oh, at least a foot or more of that over this line. So it's it's formed a cross uh, that I'm pinching right there. Make sure that the braid goes over the line when you pinch your cross. Now, we're going to make alternating loops under this leader tag end right here, under it and then back over it and then under my thumb and uh, forefinger or index finger and, and pinch that each time. And you always want to start at the top. I'm going to put about 25 loops in here. Uh, that's going to form a braid around this copolymer. And as we make these loops and snug them in up under my um, pinch point here, they're going to cut into this copolymer. and uh, Well, not cut into it, but they're going to dig into it, and that's where you get your strength uh, in holding it. So, again, starting with the top, I'm going to do this real slow. Come under, till it stops, then over until it stops. All right, that's number one. Take Do the same thing on the bottom end. Under till it stops, over, and kind of back until it stops. And you're just going to repeat that process until you've got to number 25. Or actually 26. I like to stop on the downside here. That's 10. As I make these loops, uh, it's kind of inching out from under uh, my pinch point here. So I'm going to let that go and, and see how things are looking. That's, that's how you want it to look. And I'm going to repinch. Repinch. I was on 10. And 26. Okay, and that's how we're supposed to be looking. Right there. Now, I'm going to take my main line and run it parallel with the tag end on this leader line. And just kind of pinch those together right there. So this is the tag end of my main line here. And I'm going to make two half hitches around both of those lines. Make sure that you're around both of the lines. Tighten that a little bit. Just 
just repeat. And at this point, take the tag end of your main line and your main line and hold those. And not a whole lot of pressure, but you just want to pinch that. Uh, get that pinched off pretty tight there. Now the next step is the most important one with the FG knot. I like to take a pair of gloves because you really need to pull hard on this and braid will absolutely uh, slice your finger to the bone in the joint if, if you pull too hard. In fact, I don't know if you can see it. I have a scar right there. I've cut myself so many times. I don't feel like bleeding today. So I'm going to use some gloves. Now the only thing about gloves is sometimes you can pull too tight with gloves. Uh, sometimes I kind of like to do it uh, with just my hands uh, so that I don't uh, pull it too tight. And you know when you pull it too tight because your line breaks. A really good grip right here. So I'll wrap it two or three times. And uh, this is where the magic happens with this knot. You're going to pull it, it's going to shorten, you're going to see that line darken as those loops come together and form a tight bond on that, on that copolymer or monofilament, whichever case, or fluorocarbon, whichever you're using. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a good tug. Okay, that's, uh, that's pulled uh, tight enough so that if I put any more pressure on it, I would really, really have to pull it hard and risk breaking your line. So that is the FG knot. And we're almost done with this knot. Now I'm going to do something uh, that is an added measure that I always like to do with mine. And uh, let me show you that real quick uh, as we trim these tag ends. I'm going to leave either oh, about an eighth or maybe even three sixteenths. I like to cut my leader tag first. I'll show you why in just a moment that I'm going to leave that much. Cut it about right there. So I've left that little bit of tag on there, which would be way too much we didn't do this next step. Now I'm going to run I'm going to run this through my lips just to wet it because my next step involves fire. Take a cigarette lighter and I'm going to melt this down and then I'm going to pancake it or mushroom it on the end and just give that even a more solid bond. But you want to be careful do not burn your braid right here in your knot. Just get it close enough to the flame that it starts melting. Go on down. Take your fingernail. Pancake that right there. Yeah. That's just right. Flame doesn't have near that good effect on uh, braid, but I do it anyway. I'm going to do the same thing for my braid in, for my braid tag. Leave it maybe just a little bit longer because it singes down quicker. There we go. And that is our completed FG knot. At this point in the process, I just do some tugging on it, some quick snaps, and you'll find out, oh yeah, if you've got it tied good or not. If not, it'll pop. Uh, but you say, well, I thought you were going to do a smaller knot. I did. It may be longer. It may be longer. But see, see how thin of a diameter that is? See how thin of a diameter that is? And this part that I singed and burned, 
um, remember that's um, that's on the back side as this line goes through your eyes so that's your eye and that uh, is going to be going uh, that smallest part is passing through the eyes of that rod first and you're not going to get any resistance right there uh, I've kind of gotten into a habit of letting a little slack uh, when I'm reeling in and let that part come through that very last eye uh, nice and easy. You want to create um, as little wear and tear on your connection right here as possible. Now these nice rod um, inserts, uh, ceramic inserts, uh, most of your rods today, Fuji uh, guys and inserts, um, are do a good enough job of, of not being too hard on your on your connections so there it is folks that's the completed f g knot simple uh, no tension required a little patience and perseverance and practice and you'll have this knot down pad hey i hope this video has helped you out i wanted to show you one more thing i've got this spinner bait tied back on now use palomar knot and uh that's that's about how far below my rod tip I like my bait to be when I cast it. And if you'll look, right here, close to the spool, is my connection. That's my, there's my FG knot. It's not up in here. I don't have to worry about it coming through here. Although it will, as you can see, no problem. Just, it's just a personal preference of mine. See that knot go through that guide? no problem at all and uh, that's just a personal preference of mine i like it to be right there on the outside of it and then i can get a good a good cast going and um, so that's why i cut it off about the length of the rod and when you're tying on your bait for the first time uh, you can you can even get more precise about uh, the length of your leader if you'll read it up right there uh, and then you can see out there on the end uh, where you need to tie off. Another reason I like it, so this favorite rod uh, was $59.99, this favorite white bird rod, $59.99. And it came with its own rod sleeve. I use these to take uh, care of all my rods. It makes them so much easier to slide in and out of, uh, of storage on your boat. And um, protects your rod as well. And I keep... I keep reel covers on my reel. I just, I was raised to take care of my stuff and I still do today. So you can throw that one in your truck. It's even got a handle right there so that this won't blow off. Uh, by the way, if you got a pickup truck and you're throwing rods in the back of it and you want to take off down the road uh, with them, uh, make sure if you have rod socks on uh, that you've got them all tied up. Uh, they sell a product for that too that I have. or uh, if, if they come with these things, which most of them do not, that's pretty handy right there. That one won't blow off. Another selling point of, uh, of that favorite rod. I think every rod they sell comes with its own uh, rod sock, so that saves you another five, six, seven, eight bucks. Pretty cool deal.